Hey everyone, this is the Untwisted Voice. Thanks for stopping by and watching my video blog. And if you could take a second, can you please subscribe to my channel? I'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot and thanks for stopping by. What I want to talk to you today about, I want to talk to you about some of the struggles and hardships that I went through in early recovery. We're talking from about day one of recovery to about 14 months. Some of the things, the changes that happened to me or things that happened to me in my life that I was unaware of and I thought I was going kind of crazy a little bit to, to say at least but they're perfectly natural I've heard it indirectly at meetings and I've heard people in recovery friends of mine in recovery have told me they've experienced the same thing in their recovery and the first one I want to talk about is the honeymoon stage or in the recovery business, they call it the pink cloud. And what exactly is that? Well, when I drank, I was kind of like I was breaking in the cars. I had a lot of drama, drama in my life, a lot of difficulties in my life that I was causing. And people around me were always nervous or my mother was crying or people were upset about my drinking. So when I quit drinking, well, I quit being an asshole for starters. I wasn't breaking in the cars on my way home from the bar. My mother felt relieved. A lot of my friends saw the change in me. So I was getting a lot of accolades. I physically felt better. I had money in my pocket. I wasn't all hung over in the morning going to work. And I felt really good about life. I felt, wow, this sobriety stuff is really easy and it's really making me feel great. And that's the way I felt. And people would come up to me and say, oh, you're on the honeymoon stage, you're on the pink cloud. And that happened about two months to three months, around there. When you know I started, started getting some traction with my recovery, and I started to feel really good. I started to look better, sleeping better. And you know what happened after that? I went along, I went along, and I just went boop. I just like fell off an emotional cliff. My life got sort of crazy. Because look at, after all, you know, all that stuff that we did when we drank, you know, I don't know about you, but I was dealing with more than just alcohol when I was drinking. I used alcohol like a medication. I used it to calm my issues, to calm my, my, my brain down, to calm my emotions. Life eventually just simply caught up with me and sobriety had caught up with me too. And that, what I'm trying to say is that eventually we have to start working on our sobriety, working on our issues. And you'll experience that. And I just want to let you know that pink cloud or that sudden, sudden, that sudden dip in the way you think of life of being great, sobriety of greatness, that it's really, really common. So be aware of that. Be aware of the honeymoon stage or the pink cloud. Another one is that I want to talk to you about is hanging around with your old friends. Trying to hang out with them. Trying to hang out and be like you were with your old buddies. Going to the bars, going to the parties, hanging around with the girls who are drinking. Eventually, if you stay with your old friends and don't give them up, you eventually will go back drinking or using drugs with them, because that's what I did. I stopped drinking, I went to recovery, went to 12-step programs, then after that, I used to go and hang around the bars with my buddies or go to the parties. And you know what happened to me? I ended up relapsing. And you know something? They welcomed me back. There was no problem with them. But look at I let myself down. That was not the lifestyle that I was I wanted anymore. I didn't want the drugs and alcohol. My main drug was alcohol. I'm an alcoholic, but I didn't want that anymore. I knew down deep down in my heart that it was time to make a change, Terry, because my life was going nowhere. I knew it. I just knew it inside of me. I just felt it that I needed to change. And one of those things in order to change was I needed to give up my old friends. My friends, I loved my friends. We had tons of fun. But their lifestyle was not my lifestyle anymore. It really, really wasn't. I needed to let go of them and find new friends, new associates to hang around with. So give up your old friends. Give them up. Give up your old friends. Give up your old places where you went to drink. That doesn't exist anymore. Pull back because eventually you will drink. You will give in to it. We're human. We really are. We're human beings and we'll give in to temptation. Another one is, is a feeling like I know about, I think about eight months, nine months, I felt this overwhelming feeling of depression 
hopelessness and sadness come over me. And I was wondering, what the hell is going on with me? You know, I was feeling pretty good, but now I feel like shit. Life is crummy for me, I feel depressed. Like I said earlier, we're dealing with more than just the alcoholism. Old feelings, old resentments, anger, you know, it, it, self esteem issues, a lot of things we're dealing with, and we use alcohol to deal with those problems. You know, maybe childhood issues, marital problems, whatever it may be. We used alcohol to medicate ourselves, and so did I. I used a lot of alcohol to keep those emotions quiet, to help me when I was depressed, to help me when I was sad. A lot of that stuff, a lot of those feelings, I'm not a therapist, but a lot of that stuff is just pent up emotions. And we need to maybe go to therapy, talk to somebody, go to recovery programs, whatever it may be, even a treatment center, and talk about our feelings. Start getting that garbage out for we can start feeling better. So if you're feeling really depressed or really sad, like really sad or hopeless, it's really pretty normal. But you need to do something about it. Maybe go to your doctor, your family doctor, and talk to him or her about it and see what they recommend. Okay? So it's perfectly normal. But if you don't do something about it, you may drink. It's a trigger, they call it in the recovery industry. It's a trigger. So do something about it if you're feeling depressed, hopeless, or you have this overwhelming sadness. But let me tell you something again. It's perfectly normal. It's perfectly normal. It really, really is. Another one, I'm only gonna to touch on it for a second, and that is stay out of relationships. For guys and gals, stay out of them. It takes the focus off your recovery and the focus off you and it'll stunt your growth in early recovery. And you know something? A lot of people that I know, including myself, went out drinking because of a relationship. I didn't have the emotional horsepower to get involved in a relationship. So stay out of relationships if you can. If you're married or if you're common law, by all means don't leave work on it but if you're single take the time out to work on yourself that's all I want to say about that stay out of relationships I made a video about relationships up here if you want to take a look of look at it and let me tell you some relationships in early recovery can be pretty pretty crazy believe me another one is it may be obvious to some people keep alcohol out of your house keep it out of your house okay have a place that you can go when times are rough or times are great and be safe. My home is really my own safe, my only safe spot in the whole world, basically, where there's no alcohol, because alcohol is all over the place. So when I come home after a day's work or whatever, I don't have to worry about if there's alcohol. If I'm experiencing a tough time in my life, I can go home and call people on the phone or, or have people over at my house and there's no alcohol. So it doesn't give me the temptation to drink. I don't have to look at it and be, be tortured by, oh, I need a drink, I need a drink, I'm going through hell, because it's not there. So have a safe spot and make that safe spot your home. If people come over with alcohol, just ask them to bring it back with them, bring it home with them. Most people don't mind. They really don't mind doing that. But alcohol in your home, just get rid of it, at least for the time being, for you don't have the temptation. You know, sobriety is difficult. It really, really is, because we're dealing with more than just the, with the alcohol. But it's not impossible. It really, really isn't. The key for me to have sobriety or a contented life is the ability to reach out, find people that I can talk to about what's going on. 12-step programs, positive outlets. You know, you can go to therapy, you can go to your family doctor, find some positive outlets to help you deal with the things that you're going through in your sobriety. You know, that can help you a, a great deal. Reach out, continue to reach out. Go to a treatment center, whatever it takes. Do not drink because your life will get shitty again. But if you drink, you have, you, you've lost hope. You've lost the hope of getting better and having a great life. I've been sober for over 10 years. My life isn't perfect, but let me tell you something, it's pretty damn good. It's pretty, 
pretty good. If you're experiencing any problems in early sobriety or you've come across things, please add it to the list, my list that I've, I've talked about on this video. You can put it below in the comments. And if you like my video, also comment. If you don't like my video, comment. But look at, my channel is based on you reaching out and leaving comments and we helping us that doesn't even make sense, does it? <laughs> helping each other, reaching out and helping each other. You know, that is the key to recovery, it really is. One person with alcoholism talking to another person with alcoholism, that is where the magic starts. Okay, thank you very much. This is the untwisted voice of Terry G. And as usual, look after yourself because it shows. Have a great day, one day at a time, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.